the larger of the two numbers is 10 more than the smaller. If the larger one is six times the smaller number, what are the two numbers? And before we get started on solving this problem, I put another little word down here, um, which we call constraint. And it turns out that in a lot of problems, there's a certain constraint that helps you actually solve the problem. And you'll see, after you see a bunch of examples, how that word kind of fits in to us solving different kinds of word problems. So the first thing you want to do is recognize that you're dealing with two numbers. And so you want to let the numbers be represented by a variable. Typically, we like to use x. So you write down, let x equal. And then you want to, well, obviously, since there's only two numbers, you want to let x equal one of the two numbers. And it's usually a good idea to let x equal the smallest number. So in this case, we're going to let x equal the smallest of the two numbers. And yes, it is a good idea to write out exactly what you let x represent. So now it tells you that the larger of the two numbers is 10 more than the smaller one. So if the smaller one is x, 10 more than x would be x plus 10. And so we're going to let x plus 10 equal the larger number. Okay, so now you have to find your two numbers. Now we want to solve what those two numbers are. And for that, we need a constraint. So we're looking for some information that helps us figure out what these two numbers are. And they tell us here that the larger one is six times the smaller number. And it's not often a bad idea um, to actually write it like this. The larger is equal to six times the smaller number. Kind of paraphrasing what the sentence actually says in English, just kind of put it more into a mathematical equation. So the larger number is six times the smaller number, we call that the constraint, and now we simply replace what the larger and smaller number are in terms of the way you defined it with the variable x. So if x is the smallest number, we're going to put x in there. If x plus 10 is a larger number, we're going to put that in there. So we have, um, whoop, I was going to write 10, but let's um, replace it. So x plus 10, which represents a larger number, is six times the smaller number, which is x. There you go. So there's the constraint that helped us figure out how to write the problem into an equation. And now all we have to do is simply solve this. So we end up with x plus 10 equals 6x. And the first thing we want to do, of course, is we want to write all the, um, bring all the x's to one side, all the numbers to the other side. So we have a x minus 6x. Remember, whenever you cross over the equal sign, you get a negative sign. Um, so instead of positive, it becomes negative. The 10 goes the other side, becomes a minus 10. Now you combine like terms on both sides. x minus 6x is minus 5x equals minus 10. And the last thing we do is, of course, divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient in front of x. That's the number in front of x. We call that the coefficient. So that cancels out. We end up with x equals 2. All right. Now we go back and see what we defined our numbers as. Since x was defined as the smallest number, therefore the smallest number is 2. That becomes number 2. And since x plus 10 represents a larger number, uh, well, if x is 2, 2 plus 10, that means the larger number becomes 12. Now, just to make sure we did this correctly, let's go back and make sure that it matches. So the larger of the two numbers is 10 more than the small one. 12 is 10 more than 2. So that works. And the next one says, if the larger one is six times the smaller number, well, let's see, it's 12, six times two. That's sure, that's sure uh, true. Six times two is 12. So we did it. And that's the answer. All right.